Greetings today. Today I'm diving into my own personal top five mistakes that I've suffered from during my first seven months as an amateur part-time FDM printing and painting hobby enjoyer. If you've seen some of my existing videos, you'll probably be smirking to yourself right now and muttering, eh? Only five mistakes, dude. What about the other 500? And just to reiterate, these aren't your usual mistakes like not drying your filament. These are things that I've personally struggled with over the past few months of taking up this hobby part-time that I know plenty of you guys out there will relate to as well. So as Leo whispered into his lady friend's ear once she hit her quarter centenary, let's move on, shall we? But make sure to stick around for number five. This is a bit of a controversial one. First up for me is being messy and unorganized. Honestly, the sheer state my workstations get into at times are worse than a Nick Nolte mugshot. You see, if your work area is a mess to begin with, especially if it's a non-dedicated space, the chaos becomes a barrier to spending a chill few hours with paint and plastic. Because what happens when you walk in and see it? You turn around and walk away. Just like Leo when his girlfriend becomes old enough to legally buy alcohol in Eritrea. Yeah, I'll loop that up just for the sole purposes of this second Leo gag. For me, even if my gaff's pristine to start with, it soon goes tits up. Open bottles of paint multiply like overly moist gremlins. Tools go missing like minutes of prison CCTV. Things get sweaty, cramped and claustrophobic like a sleepover at Did you see the state of my desk just then? I've not had so many piles of soiled Kleenex around my room since I was a teenager with a sudden awareness of the existence of the Sears catalogue. And all the above, even if you do sit down to begin with, only leads to focus being pulled from the actual creating of stuff. Due to things like trying to locate the one good unruined brush I still have. This all costs time and money too. Throwing paint into the trays and wasting most of it is a big one for me. At times like these, best thing to do is step back, have a clear up and turn your little space of sanctuary into somewhere where you actually enjoy relaxing in. Number two is not planning ahead properly. Now my vids have featured a truly anal level of pre-printing pressing around, but in order to get things printing as fast as I can, I've always shirked doing the one thing that would make my life much easier in the long run. Magnets and support pins. Recently, I've drilled more holes, literally, than I've ever dreamed about doing metaphorically. You see, neglecting to plan how a figurine's going to support itself once built, or how fiddly bits are going to attach for display, but be removed for transit, is a massive oversight from me. And I want to ship these models out to buyers once I get around to actually advertising them, so that's doubly important. Having a figurine you can assemble and take apart at leisure is immensely game-changing. From choosing to zenithal highlight the whole thing as one piece, to painting each part separately for ease, the freedom is well worth the extra upfront effort. And it goes without saying it will be a neater and more professional job at the end of the day too if you set up magnet holes or pinholes before you print stuff. So learning the skills or using the tools to add magnet holes and support pin orifices will pay back the extra time spent tenfold. Number three is not planning ahead properly. Now my vids have featured a truly anal... Yeah, I got you. Sorry, I could not resist that gag. Three is actually something we all suffer with from time to time. Finishing too early. In the rush to get onto the fun part of adorning your plastic plaything in a stunning set of new clothes made out of pigment and paint, you may often skip some or all of the boring stuff. The sanding, the filling, the drilling, the grinder. Sorry, the grinder. I've said it again. Um, I mean the grinding. But not only is there nothing worse than hoping at the end of the day it will all look great, only to see a great long divot through your masterpiece, or having your latest object dar ruined by steps. You see, I've got a bit complacent with giving my prints a resin facial, but that just masks, get it? print imperfections that could otherwise be addressed without leaning on post-processing. Orientation changes, print fidelity improvements, the time spent to print at a higher resolution will only lower the effort needed once you get your helmet in your hands, for example. And it's not just layer height, it's addressing things like overhangs, making sure you're set up to marginalize the 3D printing world's equivalent to bingo wings. But all these print improvements may be hard to understand how to fix if you're a layman like me. Well, look at this. As though planned in the script, here's mistake number four. Not using AI enough. If you're like me and actual intelligence has always been agonizingly just out of reach, like a 26th birthday card signed with love from Leo. Okay, I'll stop the Leo gags now. Then perhaps intelligence of the artificial nature is the future and embrace the cuddly wonders of chat GPT. I've sent many, many unsolicited print pics asking it, does this look normal to you? And then feeling inadequate when it replies with a curt no and please stop. But really though, I've sent it loads of pics from print failures to crappy skin tone paint efforts and it's given me clear and actionable feedback. 
such as helping me adjust the overuse of reds that are put into my skin painting that my Daltonism colour blindness makes me do. It will not only give you step-by-step -step painting guide, but if you tell it what paint collections you have, then it will tailor it to just that set. And just to be super annoying to it, I even tell it that I can't be asked to mix paint and to make the guide work without mixing, and it'll bloody do it for you. And if you want to know why your 0.2 nozzle is backed up again, then screen grab your settings and it will give you options on what to try and tweak. Yes, it gets confused and sometimes mutters incomprehensible bullshit like my nan used to do towards the end, but it gets you 90% of the way there. And also, here's the best bit, it will explain its decision making in handy tables so you can learn from it. Humans literally being trained by AI rather than the other way around. Isn't that ridiculous? Talking of ridiculous, here's my nearly final mistake I've been making whilst FDM printing. Number five, not using a resin printer. Christ on a bike and Jesus on a jet ski, what the fuck am I saying? How could I do this to you, my faithful Fuse deposition modeling fan base? Well, I admit, I do feel a bit dirty and it's not from the resin residue. But to be truthful, I've coveted my neighbor's SLA oxen for a while now. I've really tried to push what I think FDM can do and tried to remove some of the stigmata that persists around using FDM for intricate and detailed figurines, but it's been oh so tempted to turn to the great unholy one for such a long time now. So I was lucky enough to get given a new gen resin printer to review, and it really was a resin reaction. Yes, all the religious language was only there to service this one pun. But the point is, resin is on another level of detail, which not only makes things look even more amazing, but allows you to print things that really aren't possible via FDM. Well, not to any good standard anyway. So even though I'm 100% FDM most of the time, and I still will be, there'll be some projects where I'll turn to the resin printer just in the interest of getting the project done to the best I can do it. So I will say only this, my brethren, even if you're adverse to resin printing, perhaps start with one of the really small ones and use it just for very fine things. There's no need to be partisan when all things can exist in harmony, a toxic chemical filled harmony, but a harmony nonetheless. It's only through this righteous path that we can truly find the promised land. Amen. Talking of finding the promised land, here's a bonus mistake. Not joining the crack congregation over on Patreon. Yep, I'm still running with the religious theme because I can't be asked to think of another one. Not only is there cake and bunnies, but there's also exclusive content, like this nine minute printer settings tip vid, plus bonus profile files. But here's the best bit, absolute fiend tier members have got exclusive access to the Crack Fox Studios Discord where we share tips, support, projects, stories, banter, insults, tears, more banter, fluids, and finally banter. So join up, you buggers, and hang out with all the cool kids. In fact, that's where I'm going now. So come follow me like I'm the Pied f***ing Piper, and let's go.